And um, all we're doing today is quite simply um, revising through very briefly, and then I'm focusing on the meaning of the remaining prayers um, because we've done the 21 Taras, and then we'll do the practice. And I am aware that, that last week, I suddenly thought, oh, we finished at eight o'clock and we're meant to go on till 8.30. But to be honest, once I finish teaching, if there aren't any questions and we do the puja, then we finish. So if we finish early, we finish early. Okay. So um, just reminding ourselves that when we do this, always, whenever we start the sadhana, we get into the mood, basically. So we leave our daily grind behind or whatever we're leaving behind. And uh, we focus on ourselves as inner beings. Take refuge, generate bodhicitta, expand um, the, the heart of love, compassion, empathic joy and equanimity. And then we tune in to our deity if we're doing deity practice. So we visualize them and they always have their own resonating sound. In this case, you know, Tara's mantra. And uh, we always have the seed syllable of the deity. And this is, and we work from our heart, bringing that energy, either looking at her in front or as in Charya Yoga, bringing her into us, which I think most of us do. It feels most effective because you're bringing her energy into yourself and transforming your mind. So that's what we're doing. And then we visualize her as she exists in the Sambodakaya, in her enjoyment body uh, for us to see if we ever have that incredible karma, but as she is seen in, in the pure realms. So once we've done that and she's there and you're here with everybody, we then say the seven limb prayer, which again is a basis and creates the cause to generate all the qualities that we want. So we've got everything there, offerings, confession, rejoicing, wishing, asking to turn, to stay and teach and dedicating the merits. It's all there. And then, as we know, and we're not going through them all, but we do the 21 praises three times, twice in English and once in Tibetan. And that gets us going. It's like winding up a clock, isn't it, really? That's what we're doing. We're winding ourselves up until we've got this energy going that is, is really generating all those aspects of Tara in ourselves. And hopefully, if you've taken notes or you've just got the, uh, this awareness that each Tara is, is separate, but also a manifestation of Green Tara herself, all aspects of her. In, in the way that we need her and that we pray to her to help us overcome our obscurations, um, to have all the good uh, conditions that we need in order to flourish and nourish our spiritual life. That's what it's all about. So whatever is opposed to us, we're dealing with it through the energy of the 21 Taras. And then we come to... Um, what we go what I'm going to explain in a bit more detail now. So we finish those 21 towers. So here, uh, having generated all that energy, we're uh, visualizing her and reciting the mantra. okay? So Tam is the seed syllable of Tara. Each deity has their seed syllable. And it's from the first syllable, of her name, Ta. So, um, just let me get that little bit. Yeah, they're, they're basically the essence of the practice and of the deity. So uh, you will realize that in all Buddhist practice, we can go big 
with with the uh, with the visualization of Buddha's deities, and then we come into our heart and we visualize. You know, we can visualize Buddha at our heart, or Tara at our heart, our Lama, our Guru at our heart, and it's like a thumb. You know, the top of the the top of the thumb. And then when we do that, we visualize the seed syllable and the mantra. They're usually on a, um, a lotus symbol of renunciation and uh, nirvana, the white cushion, sometimes the sun cushion. And that's what we're doing. We're, we're focusing all our energy at the heart. And remember that when we recite the mantra, it's kind of operating in our nervous system. It, it resonates. It's like that energy of the 21 Taras. You, it's moving like a, the cogs in a machine inside us. It's not on our gross consciousness. Okay, so just a reminder of the meaning of the mantra. So it basically, to sum it up, it's through the purity of your body, speech and mind, Please protect us from the fears of samsara, both outer and inner, and make it so that they no longer exist. Our request is answered so far. Yeah. So we're, we're singing that and then we're chanting it through your body, speech and mind. Please protect. Please think of protection from fear, protection from fear. Make it so that they no longer exist because fear causes so many of our obscurations. One could say all of them, because the ego is a, is a scared baby and is constantly creating delusions for itself and afflictions because of its fear of not understanding the nature of existence. So that's what we're doing. Okay, so that, that's a lovely practice. We sit there, we kind of visualize, You've got a nice um, image there, which is showing the tum, yeah? And it's showing um, Om Tara Tutara Turisuha, the mantra going around the outside. And um, the Om starts at the top. And I believe with this deity, that is um, clockwise. So it's like sitting flat at your heart, tums there, and, and the mantra is, is going round and all the lights coming out. That's what you're doing. Okay. And then, of course, Tara is delighted. She's not going to be anything else, is she? You're, you know, you're practicing, you're practicing the Dharma. You're making requests to her. She's full of love and compassion. And then she absorbs into you. And that increases, increases the bliss and the wisdom and the compassion at your heart. So just feel that as a as a real blessing, you know, whoosh, big energy surge at your heart. Okay. So having done that, we then uh, have these requesting prayers at the end. So basically, what we've done is we've done the practice. Really, we, we've we've requested uh, Tara. We've done all the we've done all the prayers. We've said all the 21 Taras, we've visualized her and we brought her into ourselves. Boom. That's the practice. If we want, you know, to be free from fear, we are now. OK, so it's like it's achieved. It's achieved. OK, but then the requesting prayer is to ensure that we have this continuing relationship with this venerable subduing goddess. So there's just, most of it makes sense, but there might be a few phrases that you're not too sure of. So, um, well, I wasn't too sure of, or I thought, hmm, I wonder if people will get that. So the third line says, soon purify the two obscurations and complete both collections. Well, an obscuration is that which covers the pure nature of the mind. And the two obscurations are emotional obscurations or cognitive. So either thoughts that we have that mistaken, mistaken view, or emotional, destructive emotional obscurations that are um, 
yeah, dirtying up the mind, basically. Um, so that's that. Remember that when we purify the two obscurations, we're doing it through um, recognizing the emptiness of our obscurations. And remember that circle of three, you know, you are empty. Um, the object, you know, the, the, the obscuration that you're looking at is empty. And um, the action, what we're doing here, praying, is also empty. So obscurations prevent omniscience, basically. Yeah, the obscurations are what in the way of liberation. So we're asking her to please help us get rid of them. And then line three also has this phrase, complete both collections. So these are also called the two types of merit, the merit of virtue, which develops the method side of the path by practicing generosity and so forth, and the merit of transcendental wisdom, which develops the wisdom side of the path by meditating on emptiness and so forth, like, you know, shamatha, like mindfulness, it's, the, it's that path. It's the, it's the investigation into the nature of the mind. It's the insight. So that's the wisdom path. And then you've got the method, which are things like practicing generosity and patience and the other bases of the six perfections there. Okay, so that's what that's all about. Now, the second to last line, I think is the only thing that isn't, that might not be clear or you want, might want to be reminded of. And that's the eight fears. So just remember what we're fearful of and their outer and inner. And I thought it would be useful just to, just to kind of consider, you know, uh, am I really scared of elephants? You know, <laughs> you know, is that kind of thing. So the eight, eight external fears, drowning, fire, thieves, lions, snakes, spirits, prison, elephants. You know, these are said to be symbolic of our fears. Okay, they're symbolic of our fears, but they're also identifying, I mean, you might think of more contemporary uh, fears, you know, fears of uh, being stabbed in the street or a shooting or, or I, I don't know, or terrorism or, or, or floods or famine or fire, you know, the, you've got fire there. So all these kinds of things are really our outer fears and these are symbolic. But what these are specifically symbolic of, which is why they're listed here, including such things as elephants, I mean, I suppose if you live in India, you don't want a mad elephant raging through your village, do you? But, you know, um, that's not one of our problems here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's have a look at what the inner fears are. So for elephants, it's pride. Yeah, that's a fear. That's listed as a fear. And drowning is doubt. These are all fears. Lust, envy, greed, hatred mistaken views and delusions. So what this means is that as practitioners, we recognize that these are preventing us from becoming enlightened. So we're kind of scared of that, yeah? So we're replacing ordinary worldly fears with these inner fears. A doubt is a fear, hatred is a fear, delusions obviously pride yeah so that i think that's a, a helpful way of looking at this bad so when it says please pacify quickly all obstacles spirits blah 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 the various causes of untimely death bad dreams and opens the eight fears and other afflictions so all our afflictions plus the fear that these will get in the way of our practice, the eight fears, that we will have mistaken views, that there will be hatred or greed or pride. So it's a more subtle level, isn't it? Because even as a practitioner, 
you, you're saying there's another level of fear there. So when I'm practicing and I think, oh, you know, oh, that was pride. What we don't want to experience is a new delusion, which is fear. Fear of pride arising. I hope that's clear. It's quite interesting and it's quite subtle. Yeah. So how we do that is recognize that they are just delusions arising. They are not us. They are empty and let them go. So we don't get through our ignorance attached or suffer aversion from these kind of thoughts arising. Just let them go. You know, if it comes, doubt, come, last comes, just, oh, that's that, that's that, let it go. Don't, oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, I was proud. It's another fear. Yeah. So so that helps us let go as well. It's very freeing, very liberating. Anyway, that's how I see it. And I think it's quite helpful. So um, that's that requesting prayer. So then we go to this. Uh, right. So line one. Mundane and supramundane collections. This is the collections of the ethical path, that's the mundane path, that we follow the path of virtue, ethics, yeah? So it's like the Eightfold Path, or, yeah, it's one of the higher trainings. And then the transcendental path beyond liberation is the supramundane collection. So the path that we are traveling which is generating bodhicitta the transcendental path beyond liberation path of the bodhisattva yeah now i think everything is okay there and if things aren't okay that i'm mentioning there's always an opportunity at the end to ask a question before we launch into doing the puja so um, do make a note if I haven't answered something you're not sure of. In the last line of the last verse, it mentions Amitabha. May I attain whatever prophecy I receive in the presence of Amitabha, Buddha of infinite light. Well, Amitabha is one of the five Dhyani Buddhas who have existed externally. He's a pure land Buddha. Well, there's five Buddha families. So the experience of full enlightenment is the transformation and purification of the five aggregates into the five wisdoms represented by these different Buddha families, Varachana, Ratnasambhava, Amitabha, Amogasiddhi and Akshobhya. Okay. So I'm not going to do a massive teaching, but just so that you, you know what that's all about. Um, and the five wisdoms, which um, the five aggregates are, are transformed and purified into, are the wisdom, mirror-like wisdom, wisdom of equality, wisdom of discernment, and all accomplishing wisdom, all very subtly different levels of um realization realization of emptiness so that's why we're praying to amitabha um okay and yeah the opala flowers mentioned before it's med medicinal it relates particularly to tara and it's a symbol of purity and it looks a bit like a lotus you know a lily it's that kind of was that kind of um, petaled flower. Um, I just thought to mention the, the middle verse because it takes away all bias. Whatever your body, O oh mother of conquerors, whatever your retinue, lifespan or pure land, whatever your name, most noble and holy, may I and all others attain only these. Yeah. 
And I'm reminded of a friend of mine whose mother was a devout Catholic. And when she died, she swore the Virgin Mary was at the end of her bed. And um, my friend was very uh, reassured by this. And when she asked Rinpoche, a very devout um, disciple of uh, Rim, uh, Lama Zopa Rinpoche, um, what that meant, he said, oh, she's definitely being reborn in Tara's pure land. So the point here being is that, you know, who's the Virgin Mary? Who's Tara? Yeah, w whatever your body, whatever your retinue, lifespan or pure land, whatever your name. So there's a kind of pointer there to the fact that Tara can appear in whatever realm, whatever way she wants, that will suit the, the beings of that time and place. And I often think of, this, maybe this is personal, but it, it just makes sense to me that all these miraculous visions of the Virgin Mary are no different to miraculous visions of Tara and that undoubtedly they're one and the same thing. Anyway, you can think about that one. And then really we, we just dedicate, yeah? We dedicate the merit and um, we do this in Tibetan and English because, well, you have wonderful Tibetan teachers and you want to have the experience of being able to get your, <laughs> get your tongue around these mouths. <laughs> so um, they're all quite straightforward. And then the only thing I think where I might mention something is the last verse, because you don't normally see this at the end of Tara Puja, but it's part of my PowerPoint that I've been doing with a lot of other students over the past year. And, and as I was creating with the help of different sources, you know, the, the PowerPoint and the 21 Taras, um, some students um, pointed out that they love to say this, and I thought it was a nice contemporary touch, really. It's Pema Children, and it just kind of brings it back to yourself, our motivation for sitting here and doing Tara Puja, our wishes. You know, we've done all this incredible praises. We've brought it into ourselves, and therefore, may we be at peace. And it's actually um, a, an equanimity prayer by Pema Children. So you can, if you wish, visualize anybody you're praying for, because often when we do our business, it might be for our family, you know, these are traditional things that you do Tara Puja for. We often do them, uh, for instance, now during the time of miracles and um, Tibetan New Year. And we also do them when we're thinking of people at war or earthquakes or terrible or the pandemic or, or in the pandemic. So um, you can visualize everybody around you uh, doing that. Okay, so I'm just gonna have a look in the chat here. Um, all right, that's great, thank you for that. Um, that's lovely, Shayla. Thank you. You are sending us to Lama Yeshi Wisdom Archive. Yeah, I was just telling if some of you mix that, I met, I met with uh, Sister Max today and we were reminiscing over Lama Yeshi. So Shayla is just giving us some nice links there. Okay. Um, so before we do puja, which is nice, actually. It's going to hopefully take a, well, I mean, it will probably take about 40, 45 minutes. Are there any questions from anybody? Let me just go down, see if anybody's waving at me. There's Coral now, are they? Somebody in Australia? Wow, Charlene. Everybody happy? Looks like it. Okay. Shayla, are you finding the same thing there? Yeah. So let's, let's do Tara Puja. 
Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. All right. So, um, and of course, in terms of my residency here, this is kind of we've been working up to this to do, you know, to have all the explanation to be able to do it together. And not necessarily for the last time, but certainly at the moment for the last time. So enjoy it thoroughly. Please uh, relax and do the visualizations and I'll lead you through. Try to keep my voice going. And I've got to make you small so that I can then go on here. Okay, let's see if, if that works. So bring the objects of refuge down. Enjoy your space, fill it with this wonderful spiritual er energy that you're focusing on. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma and the Supreme Assembly. By my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma and the Supreme Assembly. By my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma and the Supreme Assembly. By my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. We just pause between each immeasurable. May all sentient beings have happiness and its causes. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and its causes. May all sentient beings never be separated from sorrowless bliss. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free of bias, both greed and hatred. So you are in your ordinary form. You visualize yourself, feel yourself there and at your heart appears a white arm made of light. This transforms into a white moon disk. At its center appears a green syllable tam. The essence of Tara's blissful omniscient mind of wisdom and compassion. Standing clockwise around the edge of the moon appear the letters of the mantra. On Tari tu Tari tu Risuha, entirely made of green light, emerald green light. And then from the Tam, rainbow colored light goes out in all directions and invokes Tara to appear in the space in front of you, about two meters ahead of you level with your forehead, larger than life size. She's seated on a lotus and moon disc. Her body is made of emerald green light as well. Youthful, exquisitely beautiful. Her right hand on her right knee is in the gesture of giving. Her left hand at her heart is in the gesture of refuge, holding the stem of an Utpala flower that blooms by her ear. Her left leg is drawn up 
and her right leg is slightly extended. Her face is very beautiful and she smiles with loving kindness at all sentient beings. Surrounding her in space are 21 other Taras. Now they're starting from beneath Tara and going round and then round again. And beyond her and the 21 Taras are all the other Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Buddha, Manjushri, Chinrezi, Rajna Paramita, whoever you have in your refuge. Fill that space. Surrounding you are all sentient beings. So you've got eight billion humans and the rest. <laughs> so do what you can with that. Visualize to the left of yourself the females who are closest to you, and to the right, the males. So mother, father, sister, brother and then outward, and friends, and people you know, people you don't know, people who you experience hostility with. And then just imagine, space is filled. You lead them in reciting the prayers and requests to Tara. So keep the visualization and let's say the seven limb prayer. Reverently, I prostrate with my body, speech and mind and present clouds of every type of offering, actual and mentally transformed. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginningless time and rejoice in the virtues of all holy and ordinary beings. Please remain until cyclic existence ends and turn the wheel of Dharma for sentient beings. I dedicate the virtues created by myself and others to the great enlightenment. Om, oh, I prostrate to the noble transcendent liberator. Homage, Tara, swift, heroic, eyes like lightning instantaneous, sprung from opening stamens of the Lord of Three Worlds, tear-born lotus. Homage, she whose face combines a hundred autumn moons at fullest, blazing with light rays resplendent, has a thousand star collection. Homage, golden blue one lotus, water born in hand adorned, giving effort calm austerities, patience meditation her sphere. Homage, crown of Tathagatas, actions triumph without limit, relied on by conqueror's children, having reached every perfection. Homage filling with Tutare, whom desire direction and space, trampling with her feet the seven worlds, able to draw forth all beings. Homage worshipped by the all lords, Chakra Agni Brahma Marut, honoured by the hosts of spirits, corpse raisers, Gandavas, Yakshas, homage with her trap and pay sounds, destroying foes magic diagrams her feet pressing leapt out right in blazing in a raging fire blaze homage to a very dreadful destroyer of mara's champions she with frowning lotus visage who is slayer of all enemies Homage at the heart her fingers, adorn her with three jewel mudra, light ray masses all excited, all directions wheels adorn her. Homage she so joyous, radiant, 
crown emitting garlands of light, mirthful laughing with tutare, subjugating Mara's divas, homage she able to summon, all earth guardians assembly, shaking frowning with her womb sign, saving from every misfortune, homage crown adorned with crescent moon, all ornaments most shining, Amitabha in her hair knot, sending out much light eternal, homage she mid wreath the blaze like eon ending fire abiding right stretch left bent joy surrounds you troops of enemies destroying homage she who strikes the ground with her palm and with her foot beats it scowling with the letter whom the seven levels she does conquer homage happy virtuous peaceful she whose field is peace nirvana she endowed with oman soha destroyer of the great evil homage she with joy surrounded tearing foes bodies asunder freeze with human knowledge mantra arrangement of the ten letters homage to re with seed letter of the shape of syllable whom by foot stamping shakes the three worlds meru mandara and vindaya homage holding in her hand the airmark moon of diva lake form with twice spoken tara and pay totally dispelling poison beg your pardon totally dispelling poison sorry Homage she whom gods mm. Homage she whom gods and their kings and the Kinaras do honor, armored in all joyful splendor, she dispels bad dreams and conflicts. Homage she whose two eyes bright with radiance of sun and full moon, with twice Hara and Tutare, she dispels severe contagion. Homage full of liberating, power by the set of three natures, destroys hosts of spirits, yakshas, and raise corpses supreme ture, these praises with the root mantras, and prostrations thus are twenty-one. Om Jetsuma Pagmadromala Chatselo Chatseldromanuma Pamo Cheni Kajik Lok Dan Drama Jig Tensum Gunchu Kejelgi Gesa Jewaleni Jungma Chatseltan Kedawakun Tu Gawagani Sepejelma Kamaton Tratopanam ki Rabtuche we Urabama Chasasan Yochuneke ki Peme Chakni Nampagyama Jimpatsan to Gaptu Shiwa Zerpasam Techa Yunima Chasel Dejin Jepe Sukto Tayena Pagel Wachema Malu paro chimpatope, gelwe se kishin tu tenma, chat sel tu tarahum yige, de danjok targam gagangma, jig tendum po japkinente, lupame pagu panyuma, chat sel gyajim me la sangpa, lung lana tso wanchuk jema, jumporo landri sanam dang, nerjin so ki Chasel trache chatampeki, paro to corrupt to joma, ye kuya kek shapkinente, meba to pasham to bama, chasrel to rejic pachempo, to keep a warnam pajoma, chukasia nitronia dense, drawutam chema lucerma, chasel conchuks of sunchage, so motukunam pagiemma, Malu choki kolo gempe, rangi oki top nam trugna, chad sel trap to go a jeepy, ugen oki drink wampelma, shepar up she tutarai. 
du danjik ten wan du sema chasasa shikyong wet sok nam tam cheko panyu panyema tonye yu wei ge hongi pom pa tam che nam podrol ma chasada we dumbu ugen gen pa tam che shin tu bama rel pe kune o pagmele Te pashin tu urab sema, chasel kapeta mameta, ba waitring we unanema, ye kayang kum kune koke, dry ye pung ni nam pajoma, chasel tashi nula chagi, til gi nu chi chaki duma, tronyan chen se ge hungi, rimpadu panam ni gemma, chasel dema gemma jima, nyan yen dashi chayunima, so ha on da yan da dempe, de pachin pujon panima, chasel kune korab gawe, dry ye luni nam pagema, ye gay chupe nap ni kerpe, rig pa hum le drumanima, chasel suritatine depe, hungi nam pe se bonima, ri rap mandara dam beje, jig ten sum nam yu wanima, chasel ae so ye nam pe, ri da tachen chak nanama, tarani jope ke ye ke, Dugna me purne ni selma, chasela yi sok nam gelpo, la dami am chietema, kune go chagawa jigi, so dami lam yem pe selma, chasel ni ma dawa gepe, cheni pola urab selma, harani do tu tarayi, shin tu da purim ne selma, chasel te ni sum nam kupe, jiwe tu da yot dandema, Dun da ro la no jit sok nam, jom pa tu re rap chong ni ma, se we nya ki te pa di dan, cha sel wa ni ni chu sa chig. Om my prostrate to the noble transcendent liberator. Homage to respect heroic, eyes like lightning instantaneous, sprung from opening stamens of the Lord of Three Worlds, tearborn lotus. Homage she whose face combines a hundred autumn moons at fullest, blazing with light rays resplendent as a thousand star collection. Who? Too fast. Sorry. Homage, golden blue and lotus, water born in hand adorned, giving effort, calm austerities, patience, meditation, her sphere. Homage, crown of Tatagatas, actions triumph without limit, relied on by conquerors' children, having reached every perfection. Homage, filling with Tutare, whom desire direction and space, trampling with her feed the seven worlds, able to draw forth all beings. Homage worshipped by the all lords, Chakra Agni Brahma Marut, honoured by the hosts of spirits, corpse racers, Gandavas, Yakshas. Homage with her trad and pay sounds, destroying foes' magic diagrams, her feet pressing left out right in, blazing in a raging fire blaze, Homage to the very dreadful destroyer of Mara's champions, she with frowning lotus visage, who is slayer of all enemies. Homage at the heart her fingers, adorn her with three jewel mudra, light ray masses all excited, all directions wheels adorn her. Homage see so joyous radiant, crown emit and gardens of light, mirthful laughing with Tutare, subjugating Mara's divas. Homage she able to summon all her guardians' assembly, shaking, frowning with her home sign, saving from every misfortune. Homage crown adorned with crescent, moon all ornaments most shining, Amitabha in her hair knot. 
sending out much light eternal homage she mid wreath ablaze like eon ending fire abiding right stretch left bent joy surrounds you troops of enemies destroying homage she who strikes the ground with her palm and with her foot beats it scowling with the letter whom the seven level she does conquer homage happy virtuous peaceful she whose field is peace nirvana she endowed with arm and so are destroyer of the great evil homage she with joy surrounded tearing foes bodies asunder frees with whom and knowledge mantra arrangement of the ten letters homage to re with seed letter of the shape of syllable whom by foot stamping shakes the three worlds meru mandara and vindaya homage holding in her hand the hemlock moon of diva lake form which my spoken tara and pay totally dispelling poison homage she whom gods and their kings and the kinaras do honour armoured in all joyful splendour she dispels bad dreams and conflicts homage she whose two eyes bright with radiance of sun and full moon with twice hara and tutare she dispels severe contagion homage full of liberating power by the set of three natures destroys hosts of spirits yakshas and raise corpses supreme ture these praises with the root mantras and prostrations thus are twenty one so visualize much radiant and blissful green light from the tam and mantra at tara's heart that streams into you and into the sentient being surrounding you. This light purifies the imprints of all negative actions and dispels all sickness and harms from spirits. In addition, it brings inspiration and blessings from Tara, thus enabling you to realize the entire gradual path to enlightenment quickly <clears throat> while doing the visualization we recite as much as possible tara's peaceful mantra let's go a few rounds with this and really enjoy it Om tare tu tare tu re so ha. Om dare tu dare tu re su 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 ha. Om dare tu Tare tu re su ha. Om tare tu tare tu re su ha. Om tare tu tare tu re su ha. Om tare tu tare tu re su ha. 
Om tare tu tare tu re so ha. Om tare tu tare tu re so ha. Om tare tu tare tu re so ha. Tare tu tare. I Sometimes <laughs>
So all that blissful light, purifying and blessing. Tara is extremely pleased and she floats to the crown of your head faces the same direction you just feel all that light all those blessings and purification pouring down on you and she dissolves into that gorgeous emerald green light and absorbs into you throughout your whole body and focus at your heart, you become the essence of Tara's blissful and omniscient mind of wisdom and compassion. So now we're seeing her outside. She's absorbed into us, but we are also seeing her as she as she sits level with your forehead in front of you, external and internal. That's what you are accomplishing. Oh, compassionate and venerable subduing goddess, may the infinite beings, including myself, soon purify the two obscurations and complete both collections so that we may attain full enlightenment. For all my lives, until I reach this stage, may I know the sublime happiness 
of humans and gods, so that I may become fully omniscient. Please pacify quickly all obstacles, spirits, obstructions, epidemics, diseases, and so forth. The various causes of untimely death, bad dreams and omens, the eight fears and other afflictions, and make it so that they no longer exist. May the mundane and supramundane collections of all excellent auspicious qualities and happiness increase and develop, and may all wishes be fulfilled naturally and effortlessly without an exception. May I strive to realize and increase the sacred Dharma, accomplishing your stage and beholding your sublime face. May my understanding of emptiness and the precious dedicated heart increase like the moon waxing form. May I be reborn from an extremely beautiful and holy lotus in the joyous and noble mandala of the conqueror. May I attain whatever prophecy I receive in the presence of Amitabha, Buddha of infinite light. O deity, whom I have accomplished from previous lives, the enlightening influence of the three times Buddha, blue green, one face and two arms, the swift pacifier, O mother holding an Utpala flower, may you be auspicious. Whatever your body, O mother of conquerors, whatever your retinue, lifespan or pure land, Whatever your name, most noble and holy, may I and all others attain only these. By the forces of these praises and requests made to you, may all disease, poverty, fighting and quarrels be calmed. May the precious Dharma and everything auspicious increase throughout the world and direction where I and all others dwell. Due to this merit, May I soon attain the state of Aryatara, that I may be able to liberate all sentient beings from their suffering. By whatever I have collected from venerating these subduing blessed ones, may all sentient beings without exception be born in Sukhavati, the joyful pure land. You who have abandoned all bodily defects and possess the signs and marks of a Buddha, you who have abandoned all defects of speech and possess a beautiful sparrow-like voice, you who have abandoned all defects of mind and see all the infinite objects of knowledge, O oh, brilliant mother of auspicious glory, please bring your auspicious presence to us. Chang Chub Sam Chogrim Boshe Ma kye panam kye gyu chik kye panam pa me pa yang gong ne gong du pel bar shok. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. Gang ri ra we ku we jing gam di Pen dang de wa ma lu jung we ne Chen re se wan ten sin yat so yi Sha pe si te ba du ten yu chi In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chen re se ten sin yat so. Please remain until samsara ends. Toni ning je sung du ju per lam che che sel se gang chen ten drugun chak na pe mu ten sing yat so la sol wa deb so je dun lun drup shuk. Savior of the Snowland teachings and transmigratory beings who makes the path that is unification of emptiness and compassion extremely clear to the lotus holder of Tenzing Gyatso, I beseech, may all your holy wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. Tulchu Chang Jin Jam Gun Gelwe Ten Sing Kyong Ke Perwe Kunzu Do Putse Chosung Kuwe Legmur 
tu trupa da so do je gun do jab ten shu. You who uphold the subduer's moral way, who serve as the bountiful bearer of all, sustaining, preserving, and spreading Manjuna's victorious doctrine, who masterfully accomplish magnificent prayers, honoring the three jewels, saviour of myself and others, your disciples. Please, please live long. May I be at peace. May my heart remain open. May I awaken to the light of my own true nature. May I be healed. May I be a source of healing for all sentient beings. May I be healthy. May I be happy. May I be at ease. There we go. You can unmute yourself. Nice to hear you as well. Thank you, Michael, for hosting. Thank you, everybody. That was fun, wasn't it? Yes.